The examples of ionic compounds are like NaCl. Sodium is a metal, chloride is a non-metal. So combination of metal, non-metal, it's a ionic compound. How does it form? Sodium has 11 electrons, right? Subatomic particles for sodium is 11 electron, 11 protons, and atomic mass for, for sodium is 23. The difference between number of atomic mass and number of protons is 12, and that would be 12 neutrons. If sodium loses one electron, minus one electron, is going to change to new species. Now, in this case, we have 10 electrons, 11 protons, and we have 12 neutrons. Um, and 12 neutrons. 12 neutrons, they have zero charge. 10 electron is minus 10 charge. And then 11 proton is a plus 11. If you add these two, it's going to be plus one. The overall charge for the sodium ion as a result is going to be a plus one. So we have sodium ion. What happens to chlorine? Chlorine is going to, on the other hand, chlorine is going to gain electron. So if we have chlorine with 17 electrons, 17 protons, and for chlorine 35 is going to be 18 neutrons. So if you're talking about chlorine 35. In the periodic table, chlorine is close to argon. Sodium is close to neon. Neon has 10 electron, but argon has 18, 18 electron. So chlorine doesn't want to lose electron, it's going to gain electron. If it gains one electron plus one electron, it's going to change to new species. This species now is going to have, uh, how many electrons? At 17 electron gaining one electron is going to be 18 electron. And 18 electron is going to be 17 protons. So if we just only look at the number of electrons and protons, we have minus 18 plus 17. You add the two, you end up with one minus. So you end up with one minus, and that would be the charge of chloride I. Now, when you when the Sodium ion as and chloride ion have formed already. There would be attraction between the two. So when you have the attraction between the two, you have sodium ion and the chloride ion electrostatically attracting each other. That attraction or a strong attraction between these two is called ionic bond. So that is the example and the steps showing how ionic bond is forming. So if we go with the like detail of what the, the PowerPoint says, so we want to look at the, um, the uh, definition and distinguishing between the, uh, the, the ions. So we know that so far, we know that ionic compounds, they are, they are formed with combination of ions or electrostatic attraction between the ions. So electro, uh, atoms in periodic table, they lose electron or they gain electron. In order to achieve electron configuration for noble gas. So if we have neon, okay, if we have neon with 10 electron, that was an example. Neon is a noble gas and it has 
10 electrons and we have magnesium, 12 electrons. Okay. Magnesium has uh, neon 10 electron and magnesium has 12 electron. If magnesium wants to be like neon, it's going to lose two electrons, so it would be minus two electron, and it's going to give magnesium with two plus charge. Basically, magnesium, in order to be stable or to be like neon, has to lose two electron to have 10 electron only left over. So it's going to gain plus charge. So we have magnesium two plus, and that is known as the cation. So cation is, is a species that results from the um, from losing of electron. And we have anion we have talked about in the unit one and two, or unit two specifically. But now when cation forms, and then on the other side, and we have oxygen, oxygen has uh, 16 electrons. Oxygen has 16 electrons and 16 protons. Now, if we have oxygen is not stable with 16 electrons because it's not like one of the noble gases. If you look at the last column in the periodic table for noble gases, you have helium has two electrons. You have neon with 10 electrons. You have argon with 18 electrons. Then you have krypton with 36 electrons. So oxygen is not one of those, but it's closest to one of those noble gases. Which one is oxygen atom closest to? Can you identify the noble gas that oxygen atom is the closest to that? You can use the chat box and I hope you can hear me because if you don't, that would be a problem. Um, you can respond in chat, tell me that you can hear me, and at the same time, what is, which element is the closest to oxygen in terms of number of electrons? Okay, let me open the chat box. Argon, very good. So we have argon closest to oxygen. Since ox argon is closest, then the best role model for oxygen is argon. So argon with 18 electrons is going to be closest noble gas to oxygen. So for oxygen to form the ion, it's easier to, to gain two electrons. So plus two electron is going to change to new species that has 18 electrons, but still 16 protons. It's not gonna change, number of protons is not gonna change. Protons are in the nucleus of the atom, is not going to change. But the, the electrons, number of electrons is going to change when it's changing to ion or when it's forming ionic compound. So now that we have 18 electron and 16 proton, this species, new species, is not neutral because oxygen in the periodic table is neutral. The reason it's neutral because you have 16 electron and 16, uh, 16 electron and 16 proton. When gaining two electron, 18 electron, 16 proton, what's the new charge? What is the charge of the oxygen? What would be the charge for oxygen? two minus, so we have two minus. When magnesium loses two electron, changes to magnesium two plus, oxygen gains two electron, changes to oxide ion. Then you bring these two together and make an ionic compound. So first you write your magnesium ion, you have to write the metal first, and then you write the non-metal second, okay? You can write the charges first. This is not a compound. When you write the formula of a compound, it should not show any charges. And it must be neutral. Then you have to decide, OK, how many magnesium do I need to cancel the charge of one oxygen? Because I made it simple here, and you have 2 plus charge and 2 minus charge. 
one of each is going to be sufficient to give you neutral compound. So basically one magnesium with one oxygen is going to give magnesium oxide. And shortcut to that is you are going to give the charges to, as a subscript, to the opposite. So charge of the oxygen goes to magnesium, charge of the magnesium goes to oxygen. Now on the next step, we have magnesium two, oxygen two. This is a ionic compound because it's a metal and non-metal. Ionic compound, they must be expressed in the lowest possible whole number ratio. That means after you switch the charges, that next step would be to uh, simplify it. Can we simplify these numbers? If we can simplify it, we should simplify it. Now, if we divide both of them by two, so they, they are going to cancel each other. And then your final answer should be magnesium oxide, MgO. So just uh, one more time, review of, the, um, review of the steps. First, you start with element. Okay, this is your element, magnesium. Then you compare that to the noble gases and see what would be best situation for magnesium, like losing two electron to be like neon or gaining six electron to be like argon because these are the two choices for magnesium. Can either lose two electrons to be like neon or gain six more electron and be like argon. Which one is ideal? Both of them. As long as has electron configuration of one of the noble gases is ideal. Which one is possible or less work or doable is neon. Losing two electron is easier than gaining six electron. So if it's up to three electron, lost or gain, it's possible. The, uh, the rest of it is like a dream that doesn't always come true, okay? So you can, magnesium cannot gain six electrons because it doesn't have the power to hold the six electrons. Magnesium only has 12 protons in the nucleus that holds the, the, the electrons around it. Now, if you put like 18 electrons, they lose track of it. They cannot handle it. So I can talk more about that later, but when we are talking about the, the atomic size, but imagine if you, in this case for the oxygen, you bring only two electron, okay? Only two electron, you have six, now you have 16 protons, 16 positive charge, 18 electrons. So it's kind of the at attraction or attention for electrons is going to be lowered because you are dividing 16 positive over 18 negative. In this case, for, or you, you can either, you know, try to look for the electrostatic attraction and the ratio of positive to negative charges, or just go with, if you have three or less electron, we're just gonna go with that direction, the difference from the noble gas. So if, if magnesium has, only two electron difference between neon and magnesium, magnesium has two extra electron compared to neon, it's going to lose the two electron and gain the two plus charge. So that's what, step one. Oxygen, you, you compare now oxygen, 16 electrons, and you say oxygen also with the 16 electron is between neon and argon. Which one is a better choice which one is closer in terms of the number of electrons to the, mag to the to oxygen, then you say argon. Argon is closer to oxygen in terms of number of electrons. So it makes sense for oxygen to gain two electron rather than losing six electron. Losing or gaining more than three electron is not possible. It doesn't make sense. It takes a lot of energy. So atoms are not going to do that. It has to be up to three electron lost or gained for group A elements. Let me just specify on that for group A elements. 
losing or gaining up to three electrons. So oxygen gains the two electron. Now you have oxide, then you bring them together. And when you bring them together, then you want to make sure for ionic compounds where you have metal and non-metal only, you want the lowest possible whole number ratio. And since Mg2O2 does not give the lowest possible ratio, you simplify it to MgO. Okay. Any questions? Uh, okay, good question. I see the question here. Why should they compare to noble gases? Uh, because noble gases, they are the most stable atoms in the periodic table. Noble gases, they have electron configuration that if you look at the electron configuration from uh, unit two, for noble gases, they have uh, complete S and P orbital, or they satisfy octet rule. Octet meaning that on the last energy level, they would have eight electrons. Noble gas, another name for noble gas is uh, inert gases. They are very stable. So noble gases are the, the role model for every element in the, every atom in the periodic table, every element, they want to be like noble gases. And uh, if you look at the uh, electron configuration for neon, because it has 10 electron, it's going to be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Magnesium has 12 electron, and the electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, and 3s2. Magnesium wants to be like neon. What are the choices? Magnesium has 12 electrons, 12 protons, and 12 neutrons. Neon has 10 electrons and 10 protons and 10 neutrons. But can you, ch can you change the number of protons or, or neutrons? We already answered that question last class in unit two, we cannot change the number of protons. The only thing that can be changed is number of electrons. So how many electron magnesium must lose to be like neon? It's the difference, two electrons. So it's going to lose two electron. So when it loses two electron minus the two electron, now is going to have only 10 electron with 10 negative charge, but still 12 proton with 12 plus charges. When you add these two, these are charges, one minus one plus, one minus one plus, and then the overall charge is going to be two plus charge. And that two plus charge, it would show as a, a superscript for magnesium. And then you have Mg two plus. This is the symbol for the ion, okay? And after losing these two electrons for magnesium two plus, the new electron configuration would look like this with no 3s2 there. And pay attention, I changed the magnesium to Mg two plus, and that means I have now 10 electron only. So it's going to stop at 2p6. What is now, unique about this new electron configuration, it looks just like neon. If it looks just like neon, then it's, it behaves like neon and it is stable as neon. So we have electron configuration for atoms. We have electron configuration for ions. There were two questions on the last uh, assessment that was asking electron configuration for ions. Since I didn't have example of it, I know that it's in the PowerPoint and in the worksheets, but since I didn't have example in the unit PowerPoint, I, I put very low grade on it just to, to make sure that, you know, it doesn't affect your grade much, but ions, they have electron configuration different from their corresponding atoms. So, since we talked about electron configuration again for ions, I'm going to put one more example, but there is a question here that I need to answer. Uh, with the magnesium and oxygen, how can we be sure that how many electrons we should add or subtract? I've been 
if you look at the, when you go back and review the, the PowerPoint, I wrote the choices were neon and argon. And then I wrote how many electrons you have for oxygen. You had 16 is closer to argon. What's the difference between the number of electrons of oxygen compared to argon? It was two and it has to gain or lose is gain because if it's 16 wants to be 18, what should we do? Gain or lose? How many should it gain to get to the uh, argon to 18? So for magnesium, same thing. For magnesium, neon has 10 electrons. So this is the answer to your next question. Um, if, if neon has 10 electrons, magnesium has 12 electrons, how many should magnesium lose to be like neon? You are comparing two numbers, 10 and 12. This is for magnesium, this is for neon. If you wanna make magnesium same number of electron as, as uh, neon, what should happen to magnesium? Should it lose two electron or should gain two electron? First of all, should it lose electron or gain electron? The answer is it should lose electron because 10 is less than 12. And uh, 10 is less than 12. So how many should it lose? two because 12 is two more than 10. So it's going to be minus two electron to be like, like neon. So in ionic compound, we just, I wanna do the electron configuration for one more ion first, and then I go to the um, to next um, question, okay? Let's say we have calcium. Calcium has 20 electrons, okay? 20 electrons. What's the electron configuration for calcium? 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, and 4s2. We have 20 electrons. We have to stop right there. We have to stop right there because uh, I added already, I gave room to 20 electrons already. If that is the electron configuration for calcium, what would be electron configuration for calcium ion? In order to write the electron configuration for calcium ion, all I need is to find how many, okay, how many electron calcium ion has. Calcium, uh, So this might also help your other question. Um, calcium is between what? Between two noble gases. So I have calcium with 20 electrons. Then I have argon with 18 electrons. I have krypton with 36 electrons. Argon with 18 electron and, and, and uh, krypton with 36. 20 is between 18 and 36. Should calcium lose electron to be like argon or gain electron to be like krypton? I need that answer before I can write the next step. What's gonna happen? Lose, and how many should calcium lose? Very good, minus two electron. If calcium loses two electron, Losing of electron, meaning like gaining positive charge because you lost negative charge. When you lose, when atom loses negative charge or electron is going to gain positive charge. So it has lost two electrons, is going to gain two positive charges. So now we have two positive charges for, the, uh, for calcium ion. If we have two positive charges, how many electrons do we have for this now? It's going to be 18 electron because calcium ion has lost two electrons. Okay, so I wanna write the electron configuration for calcium ion. The only difference is that instead of 20 electrons, I'm going to start with 18 electrons because this is the calcium two plus. So that's the difference. The first thing and the only difference is 
number of electron is different. So I'm going to start with 18 electron and give start filling up the first energy level first, 1s2. Then it goes to 2s2. You remember the off bar chart. Then it goes to 2p6. After 2p6, it goes to 3s2. And then it goes to 3p6. I have used already 18 electrons here. I have to stop there. And it's going to, uh, that's because I lost two electron. Calcium lost two electrons. So I don't have to put the 4s2 anymore. It stops there. And if you look at the electron configuration for argon, argon has also 18 electrons. It's going to be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and 3p6. So electron configuration for calcium ion is similar to electron configuration for argon. So that's what we are looking for ions, a stability. Electron configuration is similar to one of the ions and it has to be achievable, okay? It's the, you know, if, if, is like if something uh, is between 10 and 18, uh, like we had for sodium or if we have for, for magnesium, 12 is between um, 10 electron of neon and 18 electron of argon, you have to see which one is more doable. Less than three electrons should be lost or gained when you're dealing with representative elements or group A elements. And I will show you exactly which, what I'm talking about in the group A elements also as well. So we have ionic bond. That means ions must form first. How do we know uh, ions like how many electrons needs to lose or gain in order to form ions is we have to look at the periodic table, find the closest noble gas and decide should it lose electron, should it gain electron and how many it should lose or gain. When ions are formed, then we have the ionic compound. So ionic compound is the attraction between opposite charges of ions. Now we have magnesium two plus, forming bond with oxygen two minus, that's ionic bonding there. You have sodium ion and chloride ion forming bond. That's, you have potassium plus charge, bromide minus charge. So you get potassium bromide. This is ionic bonding. The attraction between these is called the ionic bonding. Of course, this is a stronger attraction because you have more difference in charges. Okay, um, but still these are very strong attraction between the ions because electrostatic attraction is, is very strong um, attraction. Okay, if you look at this uh, periodic table and then some explanation about, I want to, to, to show you electron configuration. So you see the, the reason why uh, we have, for example, for, just bring this down. Okay, uh, we have for group one and two, why group one is losing one electron, okay? Group one is losing one electron. You can memorize like this, group one is losing one electron. The other thing you can do is to say, okay, what do I have in group one? I have, uh, I have lithium with three electrons and helium has two electrons. Neon has 10 electron, argon has 18 electrons, and this is 36 electrons, okay? And 54 electrons. So group one is losing one electron. Does it make sense for group one to always lose one electron? Because you, noble gas is at the end of the previous uh, row. And, and uh, when you look at the periodic table, it's increasing by one. Uh, as you go to the to the right side. So if fluorine is nine, neon is 10, and then it goes down, sodium is 11, magnesium 12, and all that. So lithium has three electrons, helium has two electrons. In order for lithium to be like, helium is going to lose one electron. Sodium has 11 electrons, neon has 10 electrons, so it's going to lose one electron to be like neon. So this is like the summary of the charges that you can, you can kind of uh, uh, have a 
another periodic table from unit two or printed periodic table for yourself to always look at it because you may not remember all the atomic numbers, but the atomic number is equal to number of protons and that is also equal to number of electrons. So you already know how many electrons each, each element has in the periodic table and you can compare to the closest noble gas. Okay, so group one would always, the charge for any element in group one, and this is the group one here, it's always plus one. So if you know that you're dealing with sodium from now on, the charge would always be plus one. Potassium would always be plus one. But I already explained why is plus one, because they only have one electron in addition to the previous noble gas, and they're going to lose that one electron. Group two, I gave the example of magnesium. Magnesium had 12 electron and is the same for everything else. They have two extra electron compared to the previous noble gas. So if magnesium is 12, neon is 10, losing two electron. Calcium is 20 and uh, calcium is 20, argon is 18. So calcium is going to lose two electron. This is 38. The strontium is 38, krypton is 36. So it's losing two electron in order to be like krypton. So that's the, that's the logic, why is losing. But this always happens and you can learn this as a rule that group 1A would always have plus one charge because they always lose one electron. And group 2A would always have two plus charge because that's, that makes them look like noble gas in the previous level. Um, so these groups, when you look at the periodic table, you have columns, which are groups, okay? So these are the, the, the columns are, are like one here, two, and then you have like some tall columns, and then you have others that are short, okay? Um, so, for now, we're just going to look at the tall ones, and we call, we can call we have different naming also. Uh, this is a group one A. This is a group two A. Okay, I'm just going to write two two A. This group is a three A, four A, five A, six A, seven A, and eight A. So. If you just make note, write down, have a printed periodic table um, or draw one and then label these. It's going to make it slightly easier uh, for, for knowing the name for these groups. Group 1A, they are known also as alkali metals. And we also know the classification. Uh, group 1A is alkali metals. Group 2A is alkali uh, earth metals, alkaline earth metals. Group eight is noble gases. So we have the noble gases here. Group seven A is halogens. Okay, so you have halogens and then you have noble gases. Only these four, they have specific names. Group seven A is halogens. Group eight A is noble gases. One A is alkaline alkali metals and 2A is alkaline earth metals. Now, uh, we might see in other PowerPoint presentation, but it wasn't in unit two already. So group 1A, they all, they all have the one plus charge because it just comes right after the, the noble gas from the previous, uh, previous uh, row which we call them, the, the rows are called periods, okay? Um, so you have the, the groups and these are the periods. So we have period one here, that you have two elements. You have period two, uh, which are the row two. You have eight elements or eight atoms there. You have the group uh, period three. So you have three. And what, we, what else we know from the period is like that, if you write electron configuration for this element that is in period three, you end up with three, three level only. So for sodium, 
when you say you have 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, and 3s, uh, 3s1, that is for sodium with the 11 electrons. If someone says something like, but is it is not right, okay? Uh, if someone tells me uh, whatever they write here and they write here four, like a 4s even, then I say it's wrong. And why is wrong? Because sodium is in level three, cannot have four in the electron configuration. So that's also, you know, if, if from the electron configuration point of view, it can, it can help. So uh, what happens to group 7A? What do you think group 7A should do? Gain or lose electron? Group 7A, gain electron. Group 7A and this side of the, the periodic table, these are non-metals. They are going to gain electron because they are closer to noble gases. If they are close to noble gases, they have to, um, to gain electron, okay? By gaining one electron, group 7A becomes like group 8A. So group 7A, um, let's say fluorine has nine electron, neon has 10 electrons, so it's going to gain one electron. Chlorine has 17 electron, argon has 18 electron, it's going to gain one. Bromine has 35 and krypton has 36, so it's going to gain one. Oxygen has, oxygen has uh, eight electron, neon has 10 electron, so it's going to gain two electron. Yes, electronegativity. Electronegativity is increased this way. That's electronegativity increasing. And fluorine has the highest electronegativity. So if you have the elements on the right side of the periodic table, they like to gain electron. If you have elements on the left side of the, uh, of the periodic table, um, so electronegativity increases this way with fluorine having the highest electronegativity. If you have anything on the right side of the periodic table in this area, they are going to be non-metal and they are gaining electrons. But if you have anything here, they lose electron. They like to lose electron. Non-metals, they like to gain electron. Metals, they like to lose electron. Okay. So what else we want to know about the, the ionic bonding? They form between ions, okay? Is electrostatic force between the, or attractive forces between oppositely charged ions. How ions are forming? Atoms lose electron or they gain electron and they give, they generate ions. Cations, positive charge, anions, negatively charged. What else do we want to know about the ions? We could have monoatomic ions and we could have polyatomic ions. What are monoatomic ions? That means that it has only one element in the ion, sodium ion. Sulfide is ion. Oxide is ion. These are monoatomic. It's just one element in the ion. What about polyatomic ions? Polyatomic ions, these are group of the elements that overall they carry a charge, okay? Examples of polyatomic ions, NO2 minus polyatomic ion. That's the general name. And the specifically name for this is nitride. ID. And then you have NO3 minus NO3 minus uh, is a polyatomic ion. A specific name for that is a nitrate. Okay, A-T-E ending and I, I uh, sorry, I-T-E ending. We correct it before we move, okay. Uh, I-T-E, nitr, I-T-E ending, that's for NO2 minus 
and for NO3 minus is nitrate ATE ending. So is a polyatomic ion is a combination of more than one atom and then more combination of more than one atom. There is a table on the next slide of this PowerPoint that shows you, it gives you a table. You have that in the book, you have them in the, in the PowerPoint. For unit three, the second PowerPoint has the, and the first PowerPoint has the polyatomic ions. You have a list of it in the, um, and you have to be, be familiar with it. There are some trends that you can kind of, it makes it easier to memorize. So if you have a choice of NO2 minus and NO3 minus, this one is known with the higher oxygen number, lower oxygen number. Lower oxygen number ends with ITE. Higher oxidation number, oxy, oxygen number ends with ATE. Nitrite, nitrate, but still is polyatomic ion. So if you have a compound that is combination of ions, it could be polyatomic ion or it could be monoatomic ion, as long as it's a combination of ions, it's called ionic compound or ionic bond. So if we have here an example, we have the NO2 minus, NO3 minus nitrate, nitrite. If the variation is more than that, like for chlorine, you get one chlorine, two chlorine, three or four chlorines, then, then there's a hypo for less than two, uh, and then hyper for more than three for that. So for ClO is going to be, ClO2 is going to be chlorite, ClO3 is going to be chlorate, okay? But for ClO1 minus is, hypochlorite less than the two and then for ClO4 minus is perchlorate and that is more than the three one oxygen more than the three so these are like the prefixes that is used to uh, to kind of differentiate between which uh, chlorine oxygen combination you're talking about or which nitrogen oxygen combination you're talking about when it comes to the ions if you just say ionic compound that is coming from nitrogen uh, an oxygen um, combination, you have to distinguish which one you're talking about. The names, it's, they are very important. So you have to make sure that you are giving the proper name for your um, ions. Okay. Questions? You have the list of the ions polyatomic ions and the charge for those polyatomic ions. So you, we, we talked about examples that they have uh, same number or same type of elements or combination with different number of oxygen. Like you have SO3 to minus, SO4 to minus. You see the pattern? You have like sulfite and then you have sulfate. Okay? And uh, here you have Phosphate, the phosphite is not very common. It does exist, but it's not very common. You have nitrite and you have nitrate. Um, so these are some, you know, uh, common, the, the patterns that can, can help you. There aren't many of them. Uh, 1045 students are expected to remember all these. Um, I provide maybe for, you know, uh, maybe for quiz, but you have to, by end of semester, you have to know the, the structure or the name for these compounds in order to be able to name the, uh, the ionic compound. So cations can combine with the polyatomic ion, with monoatomic ion, but all we have to make sure is that they are going to be neutral. The ionic compound after it's forming, it has to be neutral. So let's look at an example here. I had, okay. Um, what's the formula for sodium oxalate? So if you are given like sodium oxalate, you have to first write the symbol for ions. 
sodium ion. So we know that is sodium. So the name is given and you're trying to find the formula for this compound. Oxalate, the ion is C2O4 two minus, two minus. What's the next step? Can you tell me what's the next step? The shortcut, you can use the shortcut. What's the next step? If you're combining, the charges must be balanced. So what would be the next step? What should I do? If there is no number, that means it's one. And here we have two. I had with the example of Mg, just as a reminder, I had the example of MgO. What did I do next? I, I'm trying to combine these two, but I cannot just write Na C2O4. This is not the proper formula because the charges are not balanced. So that doesn't exist as a compound. So I have to. Now I have to, I'm going to compare the noble gases like in, the, in order to determine the charge. Sodium um, compared to neon, it has to be plus one. So that's like, I have to write the, the formula for this monoatomic ion I'm comparing to noble gases. But if I already have the ions, now in order to combine it, I have to make sure that the charges are balanced so in order to do that, the shortcut was to bring the subscript for the second ion as a uh, superscript as the, uh, or the charge as the subscript for the first one and the charge for the first one as a subscript to the second one. So when I transfer that, it's going to be Na without the signs, just the number, Na2, and then C2O4, one. When there is one, I don't have to write it. So I can, I can remove this one. That's the next step. Na2, C2O4. So for every C2O4, because it has a two minus charge, I need two sodium, right? I would need two sodium. Okay, let me see. I should have more practices um, for this. Write the um, formula between ionic formula, and I want you. I want to see that in the in the chat. Uh, a uh, formula between potassium and oxygen. What would be the ionic compound formula for ionic compound forming from between potassium and oxygen? You can take your steps. You can take your steps and you, you should have a periodic table or I can maybe show you a periodic table here. between potassium and oxygen, K and O. I want you to follow the steps and tell me what would be the formula between potassium and oxygen. Perfect. How did you come up with that? If you, if you just show the steps, that would be like perfect. Is a K2O. And what makes you to bring K2O? What would be the first step? K is in group one, perfect. K is in group one, so the charge is plus one. Oxygen is in group 6A, okay? Oxygen is in group 6A, 6A, the charge for 6A is going to be negative two. So this is a two minus. That is a one plus, and this is a two minus. Very good. So when is the plus one, if there is no number, that means it's one. And your next step would be 
What did you do next? Since you, you did it already, what did you do next? You switch the charges, cross the charges. Thank you. You cross the charges. So it's going to be K2, and you don't bring the symbol, just the charges, K2O. And you just call it like a potassium oxide. It's potassium oxide because it's understood that if you have one oxygen, you must have two, two potassium. There is no other way. You cannot write this as a formula for potassium oxide because the charges are not balanced. If you do this, a one plus and a two minus charge is going to end up with one minus charge, KO minus. Anything that has a charge is not a compound. It's not neutral. It cannot be named. It's just an ion, okay? And, and it, that the ion doesn't exist. So it has, the, the charges must be uh, balanced. Okay, write a, uh, a formula between um, magnesium, no, I did magnesium already, calcium and iodine. A formula for magnesium, the oxalate one, that's why it was given, the formula was given to you. The chart, if it didn't have oxalate, uh, you know, because it's not very popular, it will be given to you. So now let's do the uh, let's do the uh, calcium and iodine. Steps, and if you can just write the formula in the chat, everyone should try it because this is the only way you learn by practicing. You have to put the, you use your pen and your paper, write down. You can't read how to name. You have to practice. You have to write it. You have to go, go through the steps. Calcium with iodine. What would be the formula? Ionic compound with calcium and iodine. Um, CA2I2, no. Uh, try again, please. Start with the charges, go with the steps. You see here, this is the first step. First, you have to do this. Um, so first, let me just put the, the steps for potassium first. This is the first step, potassium, and then oxygen with two minus. Second, you cross them, okay? Second, you cross the, the numbers, which is this. This is just a plus one. And then third, you simplify if you can. Perfect, perfect. Now is is great, perfect. Okay, so first step is to give charges to these. The, the charges, what's the charge for calcium? It's going to be two plus because it is in uh, group two. So calcium is in group two A, the charge would be two plus. Iodide is in group seven A, the charge would be minus one. We had that on the previous slide. So calcium is two plus, iodide is one minus. That's the first step. Determine the charge for each metal and non-metal for ionic compound. Second, uh, cross the charges. And that would give you Ca and I2. And that, that okay. Uh, Kimara is just to be, be sure that you don't, use a, a, a second letter um, capital. And that could be a question um, because if you have C for carbon, CL is for CL is for chlorine, the second letter must be always lowercase. But other than that, your formula is correct, very good. So CA, I took. The only thing is that just make sure that is a CA, no, A is lowercase, very good. 
Okay. So in order to write, let's do one more example. Write a formula between sodium and sulfate. And another formula between aluminum, aluminum ion and nitrate. If you have polyatomic ion, if you use more than one polyatomic ion, you should place the polyatomic ion inside a parenthesis. Okay, so you should put the put it inside the parenthesis. If it's just one, you don't have to. For the this is only for polyatomic ion. Can anyone give me a formula for sodium and sulfate? Sodium and sulfate. You can say it or you can write it. Na2SO. SO, what? What happened to four? Okay. Na2SO4. So the charge here is one and that goes for S, just pay attention, that goes for SO4, not for the O4, not for the S. The one plus charge goes for SO4. Two minus charge goes for Na. So it's going to be Na2, pay please attention. S is capital, O is capital because this is a combination of sulfur and oxygen. And then the four stays. The polyatomic ion, you can't touch them. It's, it comes as a complex. If it's SO4, it has to be like SO4. So that would be the formula. Because you have two negative charge for SO4, you have to use two sodium. But this one plus charge for, SO, uh, for sodium ion, you only use one of these. And if there is one, you should not put parentheses. If you use two of these polyatomic ions, you must use parentheses. Okay, now move to the next example, aluminum nitra nitrate. What would be the formula for aluminum nitrate? Everyone should try to write it, everyone in class. Just try to write it. Okay, what is the formula for aluminum nitrate? Nitrate is NO3, and you cannot change that. It should stay as NO3. You can use one NO3, two NO3, or three NO3s. If you use one NO3, you just write NO3. If you use two NO3, you have to write NO3, two. You have to place in parentheses. You cannot write NO3, two. That does not work. If you want to use two NO3, you have to put it in parentheses. So what's the formula? Okay, Al, so we are switching the charges. This is one, it goes for aluminum and three goes to nitrate. But because it's a polyatomic ion, nitrate must stay in, must be placed in parentheses and is going to be three. Very good, I have at least two correct answers. Okay, ALNO3, two. If you are using more than one polyatomic ion, you must place that in the uh, parenthesis because the three doesn't go just for oxygen. And it, this is nonsense, like a NO3, two. What does it mean? Is it three times two or three times nitrate or? What is that? So it has to be in parentheses. But if it's just one polyatomic ion, do not write in parentheses. The charges, yes, we have three plus charge, one negative charge. Ion has by crossing, if it's ionic compound, you just cross the numbers. 
or switch the charges. That's what the, that was the shortcut for the last three, for example. That's the exactly we are following the same. You have one minus charge for nitrate that goes for aluminum as one. And then you have three plus charge that goes for nitrate. Every nitrate has one negative charge. So you need three nitrates to cancel the three plus charge from aluminum. For individual elements, how would you determine the, the charges? We had that on the previous uh, slide. I can go back to it um, to make sure that, uh, you know, you have, if it's a monoatomic ion, you have this these rules, some of the rules we did talk, watch the video again, please. Uh, here is how you determine the charge for monoatomic. So because aluminum is three plus, that's why I told you as a three plus for aluminum. Sodium in this group 1A is a one minus, so that, that's what you write. Uh, calcium is two plus, sulfur is two minus, oxygen is two minus. That's the charge for monoatomic ions. When it goes to polyatomic ions, you know the charge for polyatomic ions using this table here. So you have this table for you to refer to, to memorize, to learn about the charges for polyatomic ion. If it's not on that table, like this example of oxalate, it will be given and the charge also will be given. Very good question as a reminder, good reminder. So you go to either to periodic table or you go to the chart. For the for the charges for polyatomic ion and for uh, for the uh, monoatomic ion. Okay, so we have ionic compounds. The other type of compounds they are molecular compounds. What are molecular compounds? Molecular compounds. Those are the compounds that they are a combination of non-metals only, and they are by sharing electrons. They form by sharing electrons not lose or a gain of electron, ions do not form here. So covalent compound, they share electrons and covalent bonding happens between the non-metals only. So if you look at the, this key here for the periodic table, it gives a lot of information that you have your halogens, noble gases, uh, alkali metals, these are the alkali metals. You have the alkaline earth metals. And if you get questions, please know that this is where you, uh, this is where you, uh, where you actually find the answers to those questions, okay? So you have the alkali for classification and then the groups, these elements, in the two tall set of columns, these two are called main group elements, okay? So these are main group elements. This area here with the tan color, these are transition metals. So transition metal. So pay attention to these key and the main group element was not written, I added. Uh, then you have these two, it's called like inner transition metals. They are known as the lanthanides and actinides. Lanthanides and actinides, these are inner transition metals or they supposed to be here in this area uh, in that area, if, if they were part of the periodic table, then the periodic table had to be like extended very wide to place these in, but they decided to rearrange it and just say that these group of lanthanide belongs to this orange color and actonite belongs to this red box. So uh, for now, we are just going to work mainly on the main group elements and some of the transition metals. As long as you know the definition for these two group of the elements, bottom of the periodic table, you should be fine. These are actinides and those are lanthanides. 
but the major concern would be on main group elements. And the name for group 1A, group 2A, 7A, 8A, what's the name for these companies, uh, those groups? Like there is no specific name for group 6A, you just say group 6 or oxygen family, then you have like a nitrogen family, carbon family. So that's one thing. Then you want to know very also important for you uh, to know that these group here, known as metalloids, and that's what we have here based on the color code, metalloids, that means between metals and non-metals. Anything to the right of those boxes with that pink color is going to be non-metals. And anything to the left side of this is going to be metals. So basically in periodic table, you have a lot more metals than the non-metals. And these are also metals because they fall the left side of, the, of these metalloids. So if you have a compound, hydrogen is also non-metal, okay? So we have this blue color code here. These are non-metals. Then you have the metalloids and uh, these are also non-metals, okay? Non-metals. Um, noble gases are non-metals and uh, the blue and the purple and uh, noble gases, these are non-metals. Anything to the right of the metalloids to this line is going to be non-metals. So if you have a compound like um, nitrogen made of nitrogen and oxygen with two uh, nitrogen dioxide, this is a compound but is made of two non-metal. And if it's made of two non-metal, it's going to be, it's called a covalent compound or molecular compound via covalent bonding, which is sharing of electrons. Okay, what is this compound? Is it metal or non-metal? I'm sorry, is it ionic or molecular? Potassium iodide. Ah, perfect, ionic. What about this compound? Ionic or, or uh, covalent, molecular? Second one, CHCl3. Molecular. H2O2. H2O2. Why is molecular? Because hydrogen is non-metal, oxygen is non-metal. Lithium carbonate, lithium carbonate is going to be lithium carbonate ionic. So lithium is metal, and because it's metal, any compound you see a metal is going to be ionic, okay? NaCl. NaCl also is ionic because Na is metal and Cl is non-metal. H2O. H2O is molecular because it's non-metal and non-metal. So when you have two non-metal, it would be molecular. And you have metal, non-metal, or metal with polyatomic ion is going to be ionic. The ionic compound, they exist in um, solid phase. Metals, they exist in solid phase with exceptions to few, like mercury is liquid at room temperature, but every other metal is like solid at room temperature. Non-metals, they could be liquid, gas, or solid. Same thing for molecular compounds, they could be uh, liquid, gas, or solid. Molecular compounds, they have low boiling point, low melting point. Ionic compounds, they have very high boiling point, very high melting point. So the characteristic also, it's, it's different. The properties are going to be um, different.
So when we when we talk about these, uh, it's basically um, general rule. Okay, for the covalent bonding is the attractive forces between positively charged nuclei and the um, of the bonded atoms and one or more pair of electrons that are located between. So you might say, okay, if the if the ionic compounds are held together via electrostatic attraction and the, the attraction between opposite charges, how does these molecules that is sharing electron, like this is a Cl2, okay? Cl2, ionic or molecular? Cl2 is molecular compound because it's two nonmetal. It's a diatomic element, basically. So how does the bond forms between a Cl and Cl is that you have the plus charge in the center of the nucleus of, let's say, if I put these as a, a plus charge in the center for the first chlorine, and then plus charge for the other uh, chlorine in the, in the center. For exaggeration, I'm just drawing it large. And then you have the electrons. You have two electrons here. Um, valence electrons are going to show, going to show valence electrons. We will get to this point also later. Um, the chlorine in 7A has seven valence electron, valence electron. In valence electron equals to group number for main group elements. I hope you go back and watch this video more than once because a lot of information covered in here now uh, that is going to make your job easier. Valence electron. So if I if I look at nitrogen, nitrogen is group 5A. Valence electron for nitrogen is going to be five valence electron. Oxygen has six valence electron. So if I look at this chlorine on the on the right side here, has seven valence electrons. Okay. And chlorine on the left side also has seven valence electrons. So it's the chlorine on the left side with seven valence electrons. Chlorine, in order to be happy, must have eight electron. And the other chlorine also wants to have eight electron. But which chlorine is going to lose electron or which one is going to gain electron is not the question anymore because you don't have metal and non-metal because metals, they lose electron, non-metal gain electron. When you have two non-metals, instead of losing and gaining electron, they're going to say, okay, let's share electrons. And when they share electrons, they bring two electrons between the two nucleus. So these two electrons are unique now. They are known as the shared electron. So one pair of electron here is shared. Shared electron, they are like children for parents. They can be counted toward each parent, right? I can say I have two children. My husband can say he has two children and we do have two children. Now, shared electron counts two times. That's one unique properties about shared electron. And also, the other unique thing about the shared electron is that the shared electrons, they are loved or they are liked or they are attracted by two centers, both of them. Both parents, they love their children. So these are attracted, these electrons are attracted by the nucleus with the plus charge of chlorine on the right side and the nucleus of the chlorine on the left side. So these unique electrons that now they become like the shared electrons and they change to like dashed line, it counts for two electrons, they are shared by both. And these shared electrons, they hold these two nuclei together. I don't know how true is that for the family, but I believe in that strongly that these children they actually make the bond between the parents stronger because they are sharing very unique and very special things. So you have these uh, pair of electrons here shared between two nucleus. And that's how the covalent bond forms is attraction, but it's not attraction between opposite charges. This is attraction between 
the plus charge from one atom toward the shared electrons and a plus charge from the other atom toward the shared electron. And the electrons that are shared, they count twice. Noble gases, they have eight valence electrons, eight valence electron for noble gases. When you count these shared electron twice, each chlorine would have eight electrons. So we have two, four, six, eight for the chlorine on the right side, and two, because I'm counting the shared electron two times, two, four, six, and eight. Chlorine on the left is going to have also eight electrons. When this sharing happens, a covalent bond forms. As a result of covalent bond, we do have molecular compound. So if you have water molecule, water molecule oxygen has uh, six valence electron, and then you have hydrogen with one valence electron only. Hydrogen doesn't like just to stay with one electron because helium has two electrons. Hydrogen wants to have two electron. Oxygen, six valence electron is not good. What is the perfect number is eight valence electrons. So what's gonna happen, they're going to say, okay, let's share. And when they share, magic takes place here. They share electrons. And then so what happens when you count the shared electron twice? So we're gonna say like this, this oxygen has two, I'm just counting two, four, six and eight, because it, before it had only six electrons. What about hydrogen? Hydrogen has two electrons now. How do you give hydrogen two electrons? Because hydrogen is shared electron with oxygen and this pair of electron counts both toward hydrogen and toward oxygen. And these two electrons makes hydrogen feel like helium, which is a noble gas. So you get the hydrogen satisfied with two electron and oxygen satisfied with eight electron. Being satisfied with eight electron is known as octet rule, rule of eight. There's one exception for like a hydrogen that is happy with two electron and that is like a rule of two. But often you hear about octet rule, octet rule, octet rule, because elements they want to have in their sharing, they want to have eight electron on the last energy level or eight valence electron. And that's how the covalent compound form. Okay, let's move to the next slide. More about ionic compounds. So ionic compounds form as a result of electrostatic attraction between the ions. So when we have sodium ion forming, Okay, and chlorine uh, has 17 electron is going to gain one electron to change to chloride ion. Then you have electrostatic attraction between the sodium ion and the chloride ion, and that gives the sodium chloride as a uh, ionic compound. So calcium in group two has a two plus charge. Chlorine in group seven A has a one minus charge. And when the, they combine, you have to combine for every calcium, you have to combine two chloride to cancel the charges. And that's why we already learned the steps. It's going to be calcium chloride CaCl2 as the formula for the compound. Ionic compounds, they have very high melting point, very high boiling point because the attraction between the ions is very strong is electrostatic attraction. is like you are being electrocuted or there's a light and it's very strong. So electrostatic attraction, because it's very strong, it holds the molecule together strongly. As a result, you have high melting point and very high boiling point for ionic compounds. Molecular compounds, they are, they, they are the opposite. They have relatively low or much lower than the ionic compounds, like water molecule, uh, melting point is zero, boiling point is 100. If you compare these numbers, it's like a huge difference between the molecular compounds, like they have less than uh, 300 uh, boiling point, melting point, and then ionic compounds, they start from 300 and up. 
So you get higher melting point, higher boiling point for ionic compounds. Okay. So we looked at the electron configuration for uh, for elements or atoms before with the known number of uh, known number of electrons. And I'm going to now start with the number of electrons for sodium. We have, let's say, 11 electrons. There are a few other terms that I want to include as part of the electron configuration. So we learned about this already. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, that's 10 electron, and then 3s1. And that was based on the off but chart that we had like 1s and then 2s, uh, 2p, uh, 3s, 3p, and 3d, 4s, 4p, 4d, and we start filling up diagonally and so on. So that's electron configuration for element, for sodium, for the atom of sodium with 11 electron. Electron configuration for sodium ion is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. What else? Does it stop there or should I continue? It's going to stop right there, right? With the 10 electron, because we only have 10 electron here. For sodium ion, it's going to left. Then we have orbital diagram for sodium. For the orbital diagram for sodium, I have I'm going to show the number of uh, orbitals in each subshell. Uh, we have one orbital for S subshell, one orbital for 2S subshell, P. Orbitals, they have three, or uh, P subshell has three um, orbitals. So we have the 2P, 2P, and 2P. Then we have three S orbitals. Three S orbitals. Now, if you draw the number of electrons, opposite spin, two electrons, next goes to 2P. I'm going to occupy it singly and then start pairing up. One electron left is going to go to um, 3s. There is, this is called orbital diagram. We have electron configuration for element. We have electron configuration for ion. Shorthand, like shorthand writing or abbreviated, um, electron configuration for sodium, what's going to be? For that, so for, for like sodium, it's not a problem. We have like only few stop shells we have to fill in, but for bromine or something that has like over 30 electrons, it's very long to write all the stop shells. So what they do, they use the notation for, for the um, noble gas prior to sodium, uh, prior to the elements, and then they start with the next level. So this is the example. What is the noble gas prior to sodium? A noble gas prior to sodium, if you remember, noble gas prior to sodium is neon. So we put the neon in brackets. Put neon in bracket. And then we start, neon is an end of level two, right? So neon ends right here. That's where we have neon, NE. Then we start the next level, which is the three, S, and one electron. This is called shorthand writing of electron configuration. And that is, is uh, 
to make sure that, you know, you don't have to deal with um, too many um, subshells. So this is like the abbreviation. Neon has 10 electrons. So it takes care of the first 10 electron. First 10 electron. And then we have the electron number 11 going to 3s. Why or how should I know that I have to start with 3s? Because the last orbital of the neon was 2p. So if I write electron configuration for neon here, um, if you did the, the practice, like enough practices, you already know, but just to make sure um, to show you why this takes care of the first two electrons, 10 electrons. If you write the electron configuration for neon is 1s2, 2s2, 2p, 6. And if you write neon here, basically takes care of the first 10 electrons. And how do I know I have to start with 3s? Because the last electron going to for neon that is full already, and all noble gases, they do have their p orbitals full. It's just a matter that which level they are. Like argon is going to be in level three and is going to be 3p6 already. So the next step would be if the 2p is filled up, we have to go to 3s. And that's how I know I have to bring the 3s. And I continue from 3s until I use all my electrons for sodium. Sodium has 11 electrons. So this is the abbreviation for electron configuration of sodium. Let's write the abbreviation for, for calcium. Calcium has 20 electrons. What is the abbreviation for calcium? What noble gas should I use? Argon, very good. So I'm going to use argon. And if I use argon, this takes care of first 18 electron. And how do I know that you have a periodic table? You will always have periodic table available to you. You look at the periodic table, you know calcium has 20 electrons, argon has 18 electrons. So when you put argon in bracket, then you know that argon in bracket is going to take care of the first 18 electron. What should you continue after the argon? Argon, the last orbital in argon is 3p6. What comes after 3p6 or after 3p is the 4s. How many electrons should go to 4s? How many electrons should go to 4s? Two electrons. That's all is left because we already know that we have only uh, 20 electrons for calcium. And if there's only 20 electrons, then we have to, um, we have to get the, the um, we have to stop there. 18 electron is represented by this and then two electrons is represented by the 4s2. How do we know? It, we start with the 4s because argon is at the end of level three in periodic tape. One example, one more example of abbreviation, and I think that should be enough. For the abbreviation, you get the idea. Phosphorus. How many electrons do you have for phosphorus? Well, you, do you have to remember it? No, you can look at the periodic table. When you look at the periodic table, if the atomic number for phosphorus is 15, that means you have 15 electrons. For the abbreviation, electron configuration, what should I start with? I have to start with the noble gas that has less than 15 electrons. Should I start with helium or should I start with neon? Obviously, I'm not going to start with helium because it has only two electrons. Then I have to take care of 13 more electrons. So I'm going to start with neon. So I put neon in parentheses. What comes after neon? How do I know that I should start with the 3s, 4s, 5s? What should I start with? Neon is at the end of 
level three in the periodic table. So I have to start with the beginning of level three. So neon ends with 2P6. I have to start with the 3S. How many electrons should go to 3S? Maximum number of electrons that can go to S orbital is two. So I'm going to just write 3S2. This is the first 10 electron, okay? First 10 electron, you don't have to always write it, but I write it now, so it's understood for you. Neon, it only takes care of the first 10 electron. So I have 3S2, can I stop here? Or I have to continue? If I have to continue, what would be the next orbital I should write? What comes after 3S based on the off by chart is 3P. So I write 3P. How many electron 3P takes? Total of six electron. Do I have six electron to place in 3P? Or how many electron do we have to put in 3P now? What is left? In 3P, so I have 10, 12 used already. I have total of 15 electrons. So three electrons goes here. So I have neon, 3s2, 3p3, okay, 3p3. So if I write the abbreviation, any electron that goes to, to the last energy level of the S and P orbital, they are known as valence electrons, valence electrons. So phosphorus has valence electron. How do I know if I write electron configuration, electrons that goes to the last energy level is going to define as valence electron. So phosphorus has five valence electron. Is there a shortcut to it? Yes, there is a shortcut. What's the shortcut? The shortcut is when you look at the periodic table, uh, phosphorus is in group 5A and the number of valence electron equals to group number. This is for main group elements only. So number of valence electron equals to group number, five valence electron. You need to know how to write electron configuration, but you don't always have to write electron configuration in order to find what is the number of valence electrons for main group elements. Electrons that they go to the last energy level, S and P orbital, they are valence electrons. How many valence electrons you have for sodium? Number of valence electrons for sodium is one, that's the valence electron because the last energy level, and how do I know that's the last energy level? Because these numbers, they show the energy level one, energy level two, so we have two, S2P in energy level two, and then we have energy level Three. If I look here for electron configuration rather than the orbital diagram, it's easier. I see one S in level one, two and two S and two P, these are level two. This is a level one, and this is level three. Which one is the last level? Is the level three. This is the last level. Or highest energy level. And if it's highest energy level, any electron that is in the highest energy level is called valence electrons, last energy level or valence um, electrons, electrons in the, from the short um, or abbreviation, it's easy. Anything that is in the bracket, is not is a core electrons anything outside of the bracket is valence electron so if this is valence electron what are these called these are called core electrons so so you have valence electron core electron when when electron is lost or gained it happens in the valence electron when i was drawing that for chlorine so let's do for chlorine. Remember for chlorine, I only put like seven electron 
and that was the seven valence electron. I knew that because I looked at the periodic table and chlorine is in group 7A, so it has seven valence electron. But if I write the, the abbreviation for chlorine, chlorine has 17 electrons. For abbreviation, should I use neon or argon? It has to have less than 17 electrons. This argon is 18. I cannot write argon. So I'm going to have to use neon. So use neon in bracket. After neon, what comes after neon? Because neon is in end of level two, now I have to start with the 3s2 and then 3p5. That's 10 electron here and seven electron stops there. I have 17 electron used up. How many valence electrons do I have? Seven valence electron. Is there a shortcut? Yes, periodic table has chlorine is in group 7A. And this is a group 7A. 7A, number of valence electron is going to be seven, valence electrons. So I can write electron configuration and count, or if they ask me to write electron configuration and count, I have to be able to do that. The second way is to get the, uh, the second way would be uh, to look at the periodic table and find out that you have seven valence electron because it's in group seven A. If it's an A element, main group element, number of valence electron equals to group number. And that's why when I wrote the electrons, uh, you know, sharing of electron, I said one chlorine has seven valence electron and the other chlorine has seven valence electrons. That's where I brought that valence electrons. And seven valence electron is not stable because if I write the, the electron configuration for argon, for argon, 18 electrons, for argon, 18 electron is going to be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and 3p6. When I count the valence electron, I have to count for every electron that is in level three, not just this one, because sometimes you can make a mistake and say there are six valence electron, that is wrong, because you have six plus two, electrons and that gives you eight valence electrons. Argon has eight valence electrons and is stable. Chlorine with seven valence electron is not stable and since it's not stable is going to find a better way to be stable and tries to share electron with the other chlorine and now chlorine has has uh, eight electrons and then what about the other chlorine? We already talked about this because it's shared Share the electron counts two times, the other chlorine also is going to have eight valence electrons. Okay. So when you write the abbreviation, the ones that they are. Uh, the uh, electrons covered by the by the noble gas it would be core electrons and then anything after that is going to be perfect 10 core electron for uh, for the uh, cl perfect yes that's right 10 core electrons and seven valence electrons very good very good Okay. 